I have a little bit of an eBay addiction and I bought the first thing that popped up when I typed in darkroom lot. So I thought today we would open this box, see what's in there, and just uh, kind of go through some fun junk. Of course, one man's junk is another man's treasure. So let's open this up and see what's in there. Let's move it over here. All right, right on top. I mean, just looking in, it is a bunch of Kodak yellow. So to me, that's very exciting. All right, what is this? Kodak Handy Reflector, Model B for pictures at night. Easy to use, make night pictures better, increases useful light. It's just a white cone. Clearly someone's used it because it's got a brown hot spot there. So I'm guessing this is for reflect diffused light from a hot light at night. Eh, that's trash. <laughs> Modern bulbs now to burn that up. We'll just use a flash. Okay, Kodacraft rocker tray set. Got some shelfware. Oh wow, these are new. These have not been used at all. So it's just a little set of nesting trays. It's got little tabs on the bottom uh, on one end so that you can just lift up one end and just kind of rocks back and forth. So for postcard size, four by five, something like that, that'll be a nice little size, Kodak trays. Ooh, okay, so this is a focusing cloth for a large format camera, at least that's what it says it is. Again, we got some shelfware on the box. But looking at it, how it's folded up, I'm gonna say this has never been out. So it is, I mean, dark cloth. So it's just a single piece of black fabric, hemmed edges. It's nice. So I do have a Kodak view camera. Um, it's the eight x 10 Kodak Master. It has little plastic rings for metal hooks on the dark cloth. This doesn't have it. But being 8x10, this might be too small. So it is <laughs> literally just a black piece of fabric with hemmed edges. Um, so nothing super fancy there. Not completely opaque because I can see my video light through it. It may work with my 8x10. It actually may be too small because this is this is 40 by 48 inches and a 8 by 10 camera is 12 inches. So 12, 24, 36, I'll have six inches underhang uh, or overhang on the bottom. Um, not a lot. So this would probably work better with a four by five camera, uh, such as the Kodak Master four by five, which was rebranded and sold as the Calumet C400. Uh, not a bad camera at all, but overall that's still nice. It's still a nice uh, dark cloth. Okay, a can of D19. I've never used D19. I know a lot of people like it. Um, perfectly sealed. We may play with this in another video just to uh, mix it up and see if it still works. And that'll give us an opportunity to test D19 in general, uh, but also to see if these cans off eBay uh, may actually still work. So this will mix up a full gallon. I think D19 is a little bit of a high contrast developer, but we'll try that another time. Okay, combination film clips. Is this a film clip? 12. Combination film clips. I have no idea 
how this is supposed to be used. Oh, Cinna. Okay, so this is probably for movie film in some fashion. I don't know. If any of you all know movie film, um, like 8mm, 16mm, something like that, that can tell me how that's supposed to function. There you go. 12 brand new Cinna film clips. Let's right, see what else we got. Retina close up set lens type N. So two close up lenses, 32 millimeter diameter for 38 to 12 inch focal length. So this is this is for the retina reflex. Probably for okay, hold on. So I went and grabbed my retina reflex three. I want to say this is definitely not gonna fit there because of the diameter. These also brand new. It looks like it's never been out of the package. So this lot may have just been from a camera store that had this stuff just kind of sitting in the back. If that's the case, that's pretty awesome. Oh, this is gonna come out. All right, so tiny little thing. It is not going to fit this lens because the diameter is just way too different. But I have my retina retinette. So this is not a reflex. This is um, a retina automatic rangefinder. It does fit that. It's a 45 millimeter lens. Problem is, being a rangefinder, I can't look through it to see if the focal length works. I would say, however, based on this diameter, that this filter is probably meant for the 50 millimeter f2 lens or 2.8. Uh, yeah, 2.8, I think, because that lens here that I have is a 1.9. The diameter is just way too big. So I would say the 2.8 probably fits pretty well. Okay, so, oh, retina close up lens type R. Three close up lenses, 32 millimeter for distances from 12 to six inches. So is this just the same thing? I guess so. Well, now I guess I have to get the right lens for it. Retina camera platform. For Kodak Retina 1B, 2C, 3C, and Retinet 3.5 and reflex cameras. All right, so if you've never seen these cameras before, the bottom side, um, I've got the winding arm, which is on the bottom of the camera, um, and then I've got the tripod. As you can see, it's off to one side. So this goes on here, and it moves the tripod attachment to the center of the camera. Now it's under the lens. Again, it doesn't look like it's ever been used. Doesn't look like it's ever been mounted on anything. So another just brand new accessory, but if I want to use this camera on a tripod and have it directly under the lens, this would definitely be the right attachment to use that with. Retina step down ring. Okay, so clearly a lot of retina stuff in here. Retina step down ring. This doesn't look like a step down ring. Nope, this is just a skylight filter. So this is not what it's supposed to be. Well, that's boring. What else have we got? Stop bath. Got plenty of stop bath. Wow, this stuff used to sell for 70 cents. Stuff in a packet? How's this stuff packaged? If any collectors are watching this, um, sorry, I'm gonna open this stuff. Apparently I'm not. We'll do that another time. Okay, well, play contrast printing filters. This is the old set because it only goes from one to four, not zero to five or half to five or whatever it was. These are brand new. Yeah, these have never been used before. Okay. Eight to eight adapter for Kodak reflex cameras. Nope, we're dropping stuff, hold on. Okay, so I dropped the instructions. So what this says, eight, eight to eight adapter for Kodak reflex. So I've got a, um, it says key on it, 
it's a uh, little eyepiece thing key got a frame and then 828 reel inside of these so this actually goes with the reflex 2 let me take that off the reflex 2 camera that i've been fixing uh if you've been looking at my instagram uh, i've been working on rejuvenating this camera um and so like any TLR that takes medium format, uh, there are options to take smaller rolls of film. So this is clearly the supply. So this would go down here. So A28 film is, again, one of Kodak's defunct things. So this camera takes 620 film instead of 120 because Kodak had the brilliant idea of trying to make everybody change over to their 620 size. Uh, and it did not work out at all. Uh, nobody wanted it. So they also had the idea that everybody would want 828 size film. And so they made a bunch of cameras with that size. And 828 is very much like 35 millimeter in width, except it's not perforated at all. And there are all sorts of things out there. There we go. That will let you cut down 120 film into 828 size if you have the correct size reel. And I don't have any one of those, but I've seen some cutters available on eBay and other places. And we may get one and try one in another video sometime. Not right now, but it'll be interesting. Okay, so this is the film gate would fit there so this fits here to cover the film yeah and then up here I put this in and there's my mask so now I can shoot 828 in here this is 35 millimeter but it's on um, non-perforated film so it's a little bit bigger image because the image goes all the way to the sides but that's still pretty cool because i've uh not really played with this much yet i've not even shot a roll of film through it yet uh that's coming up now that i've got everything working but to be able to use 35 millimeter roll film when we do the video for the 620 size or 120 we uh we may also investigate this Although that might be its own video just because of how complex it would be to get a roll of this film cut down and in there. But that's still pretty sweet that this was just included in this lot. Okay, Kodak Retina 35 to 50 lens hood bayonet type 1 uh, for Kodak Retina 3S and Reflex S cameras with 35 or 50 2.8. Okay. So again, it's an accessory for the 50 millimeter 2.8 lens for the retina reflex that I don't have. But if I ever get one, I've got a lens hood for it. What is it also for? The 35 millimeter. So since I've got the uh, F1.9 50 millimeter, if I ever get the 35 to supplement, I've got a lens hood for it. I've got an original Kodak hood. And just like the rest of the stuff, this has clearly never been used, never been opened. So. That's a nice little find. Because I've seen these things go on eBay for quite a bit more. Okay, a couple things left here. This is the Retina Microscope Adapter Kit. This has been used. And there's a broken light bulb in here, so I have to be careful. You see, broken light bulb, glass all in it. Hold on, I got my trash can, hold on. So this has clearly been used before. So not everything in here is new. I don't even know how this would go. So I'm guessing this mounts somehow on a retina, but how? I can tell this has been used because there's some paint wear down in, in this. So this is clearly a microscope 
attachment of some kind. I've got the same kind of offset mounting point as the Retina camera platform. Let's see. Okay, so it would go onto a camera like this. I'm guessing there would be some sort of close-up lens. So I guess I would use the close-up lens from the other box on here, on this camera. Uh, and then this would attach onto a microscope. And then looking through this eyepiece, I can see here. So there's a prism of some kind. I'm guessing this shoots through the prism, but this views bounce down 90 degrees from the prism would be my guess. Uh, this, I don't know, hold on. I do have instructions. I can look at those, I suppose. And then this is just a standard T or C mount. I've got a handwritten card, depth of field with supplementary lens. I've got some sample photos here through that. So for Christmas, we got my oldest son a, uh, a microscope. I might see. Okay, so I have a picture here of how this works. Just need to see if I have to use one of the supplementary lenses. So I have, uh, we have that toy microscope and I wonder if this will attach to it. Connecting ring, draw tube clamping ring. That I don't see. I don't see a draw tube clamping ring, so this may not be complete. Oh no, I might be missing stuff here. It's hard to tell. Oh, okay. So there are other attachments and rings here that are supposed to attach the camera to this part uh, in between, and they're not here. I really love this Kodak vintage stuff. It would have been really cool to be able to use this, but doesn't look like it today. All right, one more piece here. Tourist adapter kit. Uh, let's see, equips your Kodak Tourist, which I don't have. Uh, 6.3 or 4.5 camera to use miniature Kodachrome A28 and three additional black and white negative sizes. Okay, so I don't have a Kodak Tourist. What does a Tourist look like? I don't even know what a Kodak Tourist camera looks like. So this is still wrapped in the original plastic. Okay, it looks like it's the back plates to take up the film. I've got film spools, which means I'm gonna have more A28 film spools. Um, so that's gonna make it easier to re-roll, make it easier to re-roll some film on A28 to try out the other adapter. I just need to look into those camera uh, film slitters. Film cutters. Okay, what have I got? More film spools. That doesn't look like A28. That might be 127. Camera back. I'm gonna have to look at that camera. Nah, I might go shopping. First adapter. Does it have a picture of the camera? Is this something I want? Oh, it's a big rangefinder. Okay. Show me the back of it. Let's see if there's anything left in the bottom of the box here. Okay, only two things left down here. One, how to use the Bantam Kodachrome adapters A and B. These are instructions for something that wasn't actually included. But then there's this on the bottom. Um, if you've never seen one of these, it is a retouching knife for retouching negatives and prints. And this is the older style. I actually have one of these already uh, that I found somewhere. And Kodak made a few different styles over the years. One is kind of a chisel looking uh, retouching knife. I have one of those as well. And if you ever look up the Kodak book on retouching, uh, kind of a newer book from the 70s or 80s, that's the kind that they'll show in there. This is much, much older. This is more like pre-World War, pre -World War II. And uh, they're really nice. It's still sharp. And it's, it's mostly for kind of retouching negatives with a uh, scraping motion on the gelatin to uh, remove silver and thin areas out. I'm not any good at it, so 
I talked about this in my retouching video on black spots on your prints, which means you need to retouch negatives. Uh, this is this is a tool that you might use for that, but it takes a lot of practice, and I don't put that kind of practice in. This was this was really good for portraits. This is what they mostly used this for is portraits on glass plates and large film. Very interesting. Now that I have two of them, um, who knows? I might put some of this stuff up for sale individually since I don't, mm, don't necessarily need all of it, but there we are. That was the, uh, first thing that popped up when I just typed in darkroom lot on eBay. And I was tempted by a lot of potential yellow that was shown in the, in the picture, but wasn't quite sure what would actually be in there. There's a lot of great stuff that fortunately I actually have the right cameras to use. Some things not so great, other things brand new still in the box. So we're going to try out that D19 another time. Uh, so stay tuned for that at some point in the future. We're going to try out that Kodak twin lens camera and eventually we'll try out the 828. I wanted to look into some film slitters and cutters and see what we can come up with for that. And if you want to follow along with me trying to fix my cameras poorly, then you can check out my Instagram. I post some pictures as I do them. Uh, but if you really want to know how to do that stuff, go to Chris Sherlock's channel, because that's who I watch when I want to try to fix my retinas. His channel has some really in-depth uh, maintenance and repairs for those, because he used to be a Kodak repair service technician uh, and maybe even made or built the cameras to begin with at the factory so he knows his stuff i'll put a link down to his channel down in the description it's fantastic so that's what i follow along but i'll post pictures of my attempts on my instagram so thank you all for watching uh, if there's any great stuff you've found in an ebay grab bag go ahead and post that down in the comments and share that uh, you can join my Discord if you want to talk about more junk and stuff, because we talk about all kinds of different topics there. Uh, if you want to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon. You can go to my Teespring store. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.